Congratulations times two, because you're having one of the coolest 2023s ever because two exceptional performances that are so wildly different. You no, know, it's very, I mean, it's really a privilege as an actor to get two very contrasting parts so close to each other. It's very lovely. Making the most of it. I'll start there, actually. When you tackle a role, can you tell me something that stays consistent, no matter the movie, no matter the genre, but then also maybe something you did to prep for Saltburn that was a first time thing for you that you've never done before Mm, yeah i think music is always a consistent um i think i always use music to just to like ground me in the part or ground me in the mood or ground me in the space no no it comes and goes depending on the on the scene or the character but it was a huge thing for saltburn emerald is quite is well known for making playlists for us and you know i i made a playlist for farley i made a playlist for emerald um of just like of like a thing that i felt like felt like the world um and and so that is something that i always really enjoy um but i think a first on this one on Saltburn um, was because it influenced the character so much was a real specificity with the clothes. Um, and that was, I'm, you know, I always try to have a uh, an input, but for the most part, I, you know, let the very talented costume designers shine and do their thing. But it really felt like, like something I really wanted to be, a part of and it was a true collaboration and it took us a second to really find it but there was you know there were moments where I was like no this isn't him this isn't him this isn't him and when we found it you know it really allowed Farley to come alive I was one of the things I really knew he had to wear were these were I just I was so sure that he needed to wear Gucci loafers I said it from day one I was like, I really see him in Gucci loafers I really see him in Gucci loafers and we we're like well let's try these let's try these and then I bought Emerald for her birthday this book called um Eaten by Ian McDonald it's a photo book and it it's um it's all these pictures of I say we I we all bought it um and and it's all these pictures of different um boys from Eton, the school in their dorm rooms and the only person of color the only black boy in the in the in, in the book who had a real air of farley to him he was a, he had a, a real kind of the way he sat the way his room was decorated everything really felt like farley and on his feet was a pair of gucci loafers and i showed emerald and i said i told you he would have gucci loafers on and she was like get him the gucci loafers get him the gucci loafers uh, yeah, that he wore if you look on Farley's always, whether it's with tracksuit bottoms, whether it's wearing, he's running outside, he's always got Gucci love for some. Iconic looks across the board in this movie, and I love it so much. So you talk about the uh, the costume and the effect that that can have. What about just in terms of like you personally figuring out just like physically how he stands, how he carries himself to reflect what he wants and also how he feels in Saltburn? No, Emu gave me a really lovely note day one in the camera test as we were just like working out lighting she said just she said try she said stand with your feet touching legs together um and and see how that feels and because i was kind of you know there's a real kind of as he's there's like a real relaxed nature to him he's always he's always almost like a panther or something he's always like kind of on the on the not on the prowl, but on the alert. He's always assessing. He's always watching. He's always kind of working out his next move or like you know, what's going on. And so there was something in my physicality initially that that sat more with that. And he said, she said, can I see what it looks like really upright, legs together, feet together, almost stood to attention. And then that, as soon as she gave that note, it gave it really unlocked something for me where I just thought, oh, fuck, yes. Like, this is it. He's always on hyper alert. He's always on hyper alert because he's always ready to, he's always ready to change tactic, to change, to either make a joke or to stay silent or to, th- th- whatever it is, he's like always ready for it. And so that helped the, when I found, unlocked that kind of, when I was given that note and I unlocked that physicality, physicality, the character really was born out of that. It was really fun. Good note. Dude's got no choice. He has to be on high alert 24-7 in that oh, place. I, I love, truly. 
<laughs> so to dig into him and his qualities a little more, when you first signed on, what quality of Farley's were you most looking forward to bringing to life on screen? But then also, is there anything that emerged along the way that wound up being more creatively fulfilling to play with than you ever could have imagined at the start? Totally. Um, I was really, you know, I was really sure you don't ever want someone just to be and i don't think he is like me there was a lot of there was a lot of of lines that i was like oh this guy is like you know he's got so, he's quick he's sharp tongued and he's and he could be catty and and you know you try and work out where does that come from and so it was really fun to really unpack what each of those different things are doing in the moment. Like why why does he say that in that moment? Why does he like for example the the you know the that first, the very first scene you see Farley, he walks past um, Oliver and he says, oh, nice jacket. And it's so throwaway, but it's not about being mean to Oliver. It's about making everybody else laugh because it's 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 about self because then he gets to the English class and he doesn't even remember who Oliver is. He then says, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And, and, and it's nothing to do with him. And when he picks apart his essay, he says, oh, thus, that's not about, that's not about, him trying to be mean. He's genuinely, he comes from a world of boarding schools where debate like that is, is what you do. And the fact that he doesn't want to jest and play, and play sport with him then gets in the wrong way because he flips it. And it's like, uh, it, it, it's all about, it was, it was really trying to make sure I knew, I knew what each thing was and it wasn't just him being me, him being a bully, because I didn't think he was. I didn't think I, I, and and that was really fun. But a lot of these dynamics, a really great thing that Emerald does is she does the read through and then she listens, rehearses, and then rewrites the script depending on what has come out of those rehearsals. And so, so many new things were born from that. I mean, the what ended up being quite like a, the dynamic between Farley and Oliver initially felt a b- way more antagonistic, and 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 there was there were moments that felt quite, you know, th- as we get to that karaoke scene on the couch where they're almost like nose to nose, and you have no idea what's going to happen, and that that kind of came out of that rehearsal where we were like, hold on, there's there's a vibe switch here, like there was really a vibe switch here, and so some of those new lines came, some of those like initial lines came later, like it, and and then you know the scene with with them two in the in the bed that wasn't in the script initially that was born later like there's a lot of these things that like came out of being like oh we have to go there because that is already that, that, that we're already we're already playing with it so why don't we just go there there was a few of those things in the script where we just really pushed it there was this the scene with uh with farley and then as that kind of relationship grew the scene with farley as he comes back um at, at the midsummer night's dream party that scene wasn't in the script initially uh, you know that scene actually kind of came probably a week before we shot it and and i'm sure emerald was like working on it for a long time before that but it was it was so needed it was so needed for farley to kind of gratify himself and say his piece the thing that he'd been holding on to with these scornful looks the entire film he just needed to get it out of him and purge himself of it, it um it's the most fun collaborative experience i've ever had so great Good. Good on her for being open to seizing those opportunities because that switch that happens between those two characters makes it one like it's almost like a sneak attack. One of the most rich uh, relationships in the entire film that goes to places you never would expect in the beginning. Totally, totally. She's a genius. All right. I want to touch on some of your co-stars here before I have to let you go. So you are right smack in the middle of an exceptional ensemble. So in an effort to highlight two people here of everyone in this cast, who were you most in sync with where the way you like to work was somewhat similar? And the second you hit set, you're like, we get each other. But then I kind of want the opposite. Someone with a different approach to the work that challenged you to adapt and maybe try something new and for the better. That's a lovely question. Um, <laughs> I loved the way Rosamund worked, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 I won't be lazy, but but she kind of encapsulated both of those answers because I love I loved 
she was in character, something I'd never done before. She was in character five minutes before we called, t- called action. And so she was just improvising lines as Elspeth. And it really, and I, we jumped straight into it. There was not a moment of me going, oh, this is weird. Let me try this. I just was like, oh yeah. And and, and then Farley just came out and we were just, and, and then you just, she just said, oh God, and do you remember that thing when, when we did this? And then and, and I'd look at her the first time she did it. I remember saying, sorry. And she said, Lafali, darling. I'm just, and then we were all of a sudden just improvising. And then she called, uh, you know, um, everyone would call action and we'd be straight into the scene talking about something else. And then the lines would start. And it just, it made the world so rich. And, me, and it, it wasn't something I'd done before, but it immediately, it was a kind of thing you do in your head. And it takes someone as experience and confidence as Rosamond to be, to, to just do it and, and remind you, oh, it's okay to do it because this is the work and we're having fun and we're playing and we're finding these things. And that comes with experience and time and, you know, and having a true sense of self as Rosamund has. And and that is something that I I hope I can take forward with me um, in, in other things. It was so, it was so brilliant and so fun and so gratifying. Um, Barry, I guess, sometimes was challenging because in, in the best ways possible because you you don't often Emerald calls Emerald says he has shark eyes, but you don't know what he's thinking. You don't know what he is thinking. You don't know what he's gonna do. And that was unbelievably exciting in a scene because it meant you were constantly on high alert. You were constantly alive and you neither of you knew what was going to happen. And it made something unbelievably electric. He's a very, he's a very present electric actor because he doesn't know what he's going to do before he gets in. And, and, and that's, he's, he's really in the moment in that way. And I like to kind of, you know, I'm not necessarily like prepared. And I know how I'm going to say the thing by any means, but you know, I've got like a, maybe I've got a sense of where the scene's moving, et cetera, et cetera. But Maybe it moved somewhere completely else in a scene with Barry, and I loved that. I loved the excitement of that. I loved the challenge of it, and it was it was it was so fun. And I think it really makes it really makes some of the scenes in the film come alive in in such a rich way. Spot on description. I think Jacob used the word electrifying actually earlier, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. I feel it. It's perfect for this role. Really, you're all exceptional. This is one of my favorite ensemble pieces of the whole damn year. So congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.